finally, we've got an adult gopher tortoise out here. And he's coming out and getting active this morning. He's foraging. And gopher tortoises, like all of our tortoises in North America, these guys are herbivores. So they're out here actually foraging on grasses and uh, herbaceous plants mostly. So they actually eat mostly greens, mostly salad. And it's amazing that you create some of the largest creatures, uh, largest reptiles in the world from foraging on nothing but leafy greens, more or less. And uh, gopher tortoise, just like all the tortoise, herbivorous. The other thing you notice right away about the gopher tortoise is this is a massive turtle for North America. In fact, the gopher tortoise and its close relative, the desert tortoise, are the two largest land turtles in North America. And uh, I said tortoise, and I said turtles there. And while tortoises are turtles, not all turtles are tortoises. In general, tortoises, uh, all of which belong to their own family, the tortoise family, Testudinidae, they're creatures that live in some of the most arid environments on Earth, as a matter of fact. Uh, so they're dry land species, they're land turtles. And they generally have a domed shell. A lot of people confuse box turtles with tortoises. But you gotta remember, box turtle has that hinged shell, that lower shell, the plastron, actually is hinged so that he can actually close up completely in his shell Whereas tortoises, when they pull their head back in, they can't close the shell up. And instead, they have this extension to the base of their shell right here. I'm not going to hurt you, I promise. They have this little extension right here, which is called a gular projection. And that probably helps to protect that turtle's head uh, from predation. And this guy is a sexually mature adult. And you look at him, he's got this concave plaster in the lower part of the shell. And that tells us that this guy is probably a big male out here. Um, just a beautiful turtle and you know take a look at it also one of the neatest things about this turtle are its legs its feet and that's a, a feature of all three of our gophera species in North America is that his front legs are just super muscular look at that and that's what he uses to dig you don't have to look long to figure out what this guy is using to dig because his front legs actually are keeled and flattened so when we look at them they're very sharp and they have this set of ridges, these keels, on the upper surface of the leg and these large claws. And they're flat, almost like a paddle. It looks almost like a sea turtle's front legs. And that's made to be a shovel. So he's out here just throwing sand up as fast as he can, digging down in the sand with those powerful front legs. His back legs are really kind of interesting, too, on tortoises. Um, they're what we call elephantine. And <laughs> very sort of peg-like, just like the leg of an elephant. So elephantine back legs and those flattened shovel-like front legs, characteristics of all of our gopherus. And I'm going to let him go because he's probably getting warm out here in the sun and I'm sure he wants to get back to eating. But another interesting thing about these turtles is that if the gopher tortoise was the tortoise in the tortoise versus the hare, the gopher tortoise may have won because these creatures can be super fast, especially when they're trying to get back down into their burrow. Neat animal. Look around, see if we can find any others out here. There's a number of gopher tortoises at this site, and this is a great place to see gopher tortoises here at Aiken Gopher Tortoise Heritage Preserve. It's because this is the habitat that they're restricted to. Longleaf pine, wiregrass, sand hills, flatwoods, and savannas. And these areas are areas that burn frequently, and they provide a lot of herbaceous cover, they provide a lot of grasses, and that's key because that's food for our gopher tortoises. Aiken Gopher Tortoise Heritage Preserve is a great place to see that, and it's a great place to see a regeneration and a restoration of longleaf pine. And uh, we're going to head off and see if we can meet up with preserve manager Brett Mao, who's going to tell us a little bit more about what's going on here at Aiken Gopher Tortoise Heritage Preserve to keep one of the most unique populations around for generations to come. The South Carolina Department of Natural Resources is working hard to reverse the decline in gopher tortoises in South Carolina. I'm off to meet with preserve manager, Brett Mal, whose work with DNR and research as a PhD candidate at Clemson University is focused on habitat improvement here. Pat, one of our primary objectives here at Aiken Gopher Tortoise Heritage Preserve is to promote potential gopher tortoise habitat. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing here on this particular site, you can see we did a prescribed burn about two weeks ago. You can already see it's beginning to green up. Yeah. We have wire grass here, broadleaf grasses. Uh, you got flowering spurge flowering two weeks after it burned. 
So even though this place looks devastated after a fire, what we're actually seeing here is, is not just re-sprouting and regeneration, but it's actually getting thicker with right. herbaceous species because it's what they need. You have to have fire to promote longleaf pine wiregrass community. And this is what we've historically have done, but what we started to look at is the new experiments with using mechanical manipulation and herbicide treatment on this particular site, right. just so we can um, quicker advance the herbaceous understory. So, that's one of the key things here is that uh, it's not just providing the habitat, but we want to do it as quickly as possible so that we can bring this population back to a viable level across a large area. And when we look out here, it's not hard to see why fire alone isn't the best choice. That's because right. right across the road here, we have just a pretty nasty looking stand of uh, turkey oak and black cherry mixed in with um, longleaf pine. And when I came here the first time, this is what I saw was large, thick turkey oak. and there's been a lot of effort doing prescribed burnout here on an annual basis, yeah. but once again, a lot of these turkey oaks that you see over in this uh, fire suppressed stand, they're um, not real receptive to fire, and they, they they're can, not killed they, easily, not by, killed fire. easily by, yeah. by the fire. And so what we're doing is we're trying to advance that even quicker and get rid of that shade tree so the herbaceous layer can um, come through and yeah. grow and provide forage for the gopher tortoise, right. which is going to support right. even more of a population across the entire property. Hard to have gopher tortoises when you don't have something for it to eat. That's and exactly that, that's right. That's the key. You know, even though people think about fire in broader sense being destructive, it's not. It's regenerative here, and this is unnatural. When you drive through the sand hills and you see these large turkey oaks, what you're looking at is really an unnatural thickness. Of you're right, oaks. green isn't always good. Green isn't always good. It's an interesting uh, conundrum we have here in the co low country of South Carolina. And, um, and, and it's just nice to see that we have a state where we have a Department of Natural Resources and managers that are willing not just to go to the lengths of doing some traditional things, right. but to think outside the box and to provide as much help and as much work as they can for a species that's in such need of help right now. And this now. study would not be possible without partnerships, and this, that's critical um, foundation for a lot of this research projects that are occurring on these properties. Clemson yep. University, yep. Nature Chem, and Department of Natural Resources are working together, resources are working together, excuse me, um, to promote these uh, research projects for experiments so we can figure out what is the best or maybe a combination of what would be the best treatments to promote that particular habitat for the gopher tortoises. Yeah. And that's what we're striving to do because the more food and foraging area we can provide for these gopher tortoises, the more we can house, the more we can protect. Well, I really appreciate you having us out here to see this wonderful preserve. It's one of my favorite places in South Carolina. Well, this isn't the only heritage preserve in South Carolina that houses gopher tortoises and a really large site and a well-known site is Tillman Sand Ridge yep. Heritage Preserve yep. down in Jasper County. That's where we're headed now.